Welcome to Hooked for Life with Mary Beth Temple. In this video, we're going to make these adorable crocheted bunny ears, suitable for Easter or any other time you want to bunny it up. Uh, we're going to use two colors of worsted weight yarn and a prefab headband from the dollar store. And you can make these in an evening. They come up very quickly. So let's jump right in and start by covering our headband. This is the headband that I grabbed at the dollar store. It's sort of padded. So it's relatively thick. You, of course, may need to start with a different number of stitches or add stitches or what have you to get started. But the general gist is this. You're going to start with a magic ring. I like to make an X with my yarn. Here, let's do it for real. I have my index and middle finger spread apart. There's my first pass going under the middle finger and making my big giant X. Going under that first one, grab the yarn and pull it through, and now I'm ready to crochet. So I'm going to chain one to get started. And for mine, I'm going to put six single crochet in the ring. So that's one, six, and I'm going to grab this tail and give it a big tug. And now I'm in a ring. So all I'm going to do, now I've cheated. I've already covered one of my headbands, so I know that six stitches is going to work, at least for the beginning. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just crochet, crochet, crochet around these six stitches in a spiral. I'm not going to begin and end around. And I'm just going to keep going until I can measure it up against my headband. Now again, if your headband is thicker than mine, you might need more stitches. If it's thinner than mine or doesn't have that padded coating on it, maybe you need fewer. It's, it's a little bit of a, uh, an educated guess that you're making on covering the headband, but you'll see pretty quickly. Now I'm going to keep going and going and going until my piece measures about the same as my headband does. So I have a long way to go here. So um, the other thing that I did, this particular headband, you can see it gets a little wider here. So while I started with the six stitches that I showed you on camera, when I got to about here, I did an increase. I put two single crochet and one single crochet and I added a stitch because I felt like it was going to pull too tightly up here. So I think when I get to about here, I'm going to put a decrease. I'm going to take that stitch out. It's going to make it a little snug to put this inside the tube, but I think it's going to be worth it in the long run. So let me uh, keep crocheting until I have enough to cover my whole headband and I'll be right back. I am going to go ahead and put a stitch marker in here because every time I do this, I rip out a couple of rows by accident. So I'm going to try and make myself not do that. I don't want to cut the yarn yet though. I want to make sure that my guesstimate was correct. So I'm going to take my headband and squeeze it in there. <laughs> you will also notice that I did not mark the beginning of my round when I was doing this. And the reason why is simply that I did not care because with six stitches in the round, there's just nothing much going on. If I am off a stitch or two when I finish, if it's not exactly where the first stitch in the round was, I don't actually care. Nobody's going to know the difference. And it was much faster to just stitch and stitch and stitch all the way around than it would have been if I had to move a stitch marker every round. That would have made me a, an insane person. So there's our beginning where we had our magic ring. So that's good and tight. And then I'm just going to keep finessing this up and around to the other side. Again, at this point, you can add some rows. You can subtract some rows. Look at that. That was pretty dang close. Okay. What I want to talk about is this. So you see how spread out this is here? Now for me, it's not a big deal because my headband is sort of beige and it's not going to show through very much. But if you wound up at the Dollar Tree, or the dollar store, uh, this is not a Dollar Tree ad, with whatever color they had and it was hot pink or what have you, uh, you don't want to see the headband popping through. You could also fix that by going down a hook size, but again, I don't want to make myself an insane crazy person. So I'm going to live with this. I think that that's fine. 
uh, I'm going to cut my yarn. I'm going to put that bad boy on a tapestry needle. I'm going to take my stitch marker out and end it off. Then I'm just going to weave, let's see, can you see? <laughs> Always an adventure with the camera autofocusing. I'm just going to weave in and out the tops of these last stitches. Pull that into a nice tight circle. Uh, so I'm going to fiddle around a little bit. I'll go in and out of these stitches a few more times to make sure it's good and tight. And then I'll weave in that end so that nothing comes undone. So our headband is all covered. Let's move on and do the ears. Here is the bunny ear we're going to make for our headband. We're going to make two layers because I want the crochet to hold itself up. I want it to be, well, I don't have the thing here, but I want it to stand on its own. I don't want it to be flippy floppy. So we're going to make one for the back of the ear that's simply white, and we're going to make one in the front of the ear that has the pink in the middle and the white on the outside, and then we're going to crochet those two together. So I'm going to show you the all white one on camera, because I think that is easiest to see. We're going to start with a, oh, that's going to make me crazy. There we go. We're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. I'm using an H or five millimeter hook. And again, sometimes this yarn, I'm using Red Heart with Love, recommends you go uh, to a higher hook size, but I want the fabric to be relatively tight because again, I want it to stand up on its own. Three, Four, we're going to start with a chain 10, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now it says single crochet in second chain from hook and in each chain across. If you've ever watched any other videos here, you know that I like to work in the back or the bump of the chain instead of the front or the V. So I'm going to skip the one that's right next to my hook, go under that bump from front to back, Yarn over, draw through a loop, yarn over, draw through two. That's my single crochet, and I'm going to do that all the way across. And at the end, I'm going to have nine total, because we had ten chains, and we lost one in the turning chain. So here we are at the end of our first row. For rows two and three, we're going to chain one and turn. So we chain one and turn at the end of row one, and for rows two and three, we're going to single crochet in every stitch across. And we're going to start right in that very first one because the turning chain doesn't count as a stitch. So I'm going to single crochet in each of these nine, chain one and turn, single crochet in each of the nine again, and then I'll meet you here for row four. All right, row three is completed and there's my chain one and turn. Row four is an increase row, so we're going to put two single crochets in the first single crochet. So I'm going to go to that first stitch where I would normally stitch, put a stitch in there, and then another stitch in there. And then I'm going to single crochet across to the last stitch, and I'm going to put two in there. So we're doing a little gentle increase to make our bunny ears a little bit wider. Got two left after this. One. And there's my last stitch. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and put two single crochets right in that same stitch. One. Two. So now the pattern tells me I have 11 single crochets instead of nine. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Perfect. Now, rows five and six say repeat rows three and four. So row three was single crochet in each single crochet across. 
Row four was two single crochet in the first and last stitch, which is the row we just made. That will take us to 13 single crochets. And then after that, rows seven through 11 are single crochet in each single crochet across, and of course, chain one turn, which we call working even. That's when you do the stitch you've been doing, there's no increases, no decreases. So I'm going to get up to row 12, and then I'm gonna come back and show you what that looks like. All right, 11 rows have been completed. We're working on row 12. It says single crochet two together, single crochet to last two stitches, single crochet two together. So we started here and we did a little increasing and then we worked even and now we're gonna decrease to get to the top of the bunny ear. So to single crochet two together, I'm going to insert the hook in the first stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop like I would if I was making a regular single crochet. Now I'm gonna to go to the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop and then yarn over and draw through all three loops on my hook. So we took these two stitches and we turned them into one stitch. Now I'm going to single crochet across until only two stitches remain. As always, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like or leave me a nice little comment or subscribe to the channel. I just hit 10,000 subscribers and it made me really excited. So if you think it doesn't matter if you subscribe, it does. It makes me very happy. <laughs> okay, we have one, two, three, four left. So that one and that one. Okay, we have two left. Let's look at that single crochet two together one more time. Insert your hook in the stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. Insert your hook in the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop. I have three loops on my hook, yarn over and draw through all three of those loops. So we had 13, we decreased two, so now we should have 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Moving forward, rows 13, 14 are just work even. 15, 16 say repeat row 12 and 13. So that'll be one with the decreases on each end and single crochet in the middle and then the work even rows. Rows 17 and 18, once again, repeat rows 12 and 13. So 12 had the decreases, 13 was work even. I'm gonna put those row, rows in and come back and meet you at row 19. All right, we're almost finished one of our little ear sections, and we are on row 19. So we're going to single crochet two together, single crochet in each of next three, one, two, three, single crochet two together. chain one turn. Row 20 is single crochet two together. Single crochet one, single crochet two together. Now we're down to three stitches. Chain one turn. And then our final row, single crochet three together. So it's the same idea as the single crochet two together. I'm gonna to insert my hook in the stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop. I have two loops on my hook. I'm gonna go into the next one. Now I have three. And then I'm going to go into the next one. And now I have four on my hook. And then I'm gonna yarn over, draw through all four. And that is the top of my bunny ear. I am going to end off. So you're going to make two of these in the plain white. And now we're just gonna quick go over how to work the other ones with the pink centers. The technique is exactly the same. The increasing and decreasing, it's the exact same rows. The only thing that's different, if you don't wanna watch this next section, is that you begin and end each row with white. So you'll have three white stitches at the beginning and end of each row and the number of pink stitches will change. But the technique, the technical aspect is exactly the same as this one. They will be exactly the same size. But let's take a look at working this pattern in two colors. 
Now to work our two color section, I am going to want three strands. I'm going to want the white yarn that's coming off my skein of yarn. I'm going to work the pink yarn right off the skein of yarn. And I pulled off another section. Now I pulled off about 10 yards and uh, I had yarn left over, so you're not gonna need more than 10 yards, I don't think. You could put this on a bobbin or a piece of cardboard or a chip clip or whatever floats your boat. But you do wanna keep two separate strands of white working. You don't want it to traverse across the, uh, across the work. So I'm gonna start the way we started the other one. With my white, I'm going to chain 10. And I don't care that the chain is all white because when I sew it to the headband, you're not gonna see it. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Now, I'm going to work the first three single crochets in the white. So skipping the first chain from hook, we're going in the second. One, two, and I'm going to begin my third stitch. Now, generally speaking, when you change colors in crochet, your last yarn over of the last stitch of the old color will be in the new color. So I have a yarn, only just the one yarn over left. Yarn over and pull through two on my single crochet. I don't like to tie knots or anything like that. I just bring up a fold of yarn about four to six inches in from the end. It's going to be a little loose, but I can tighten that up when I weave my ends in. So now I'm going to do three in the pink color. One, two, three. And my last three are gonna be white and I'm gonna use that new strand of yarn. And once again, I'm gonna pull up a fold four to six inches in from the end. Use it for my last yarn over of my last stitch in the old color. And then I'm going to work my last three single crochets. One, two, three. So there is my row one. I will chain one and turn. Now rows two and three are work even, but I want to keep my colors the same. So I'm going to do three in the white, three in the pink, three in the white. Now, uh, there are videos on my uh, YouTube channel that I will link in the description below to show you how to do invisible floats in single crochet, and here's why I don't care. Uh, for this particular project, uh, my, uh, what am I trying to say? For this particular project, this wrong side of the work is gonna be inside of the ear. You're never going to see it. So I'm not getting fancy. I'm just stitching my stitches and living my life because uh, I, don't, I don't care what the back of the work looks like because nobody's gonna ever see it. Now, if you are super fussy and you wanna do invisible floats, check out that video below and you can see how we do that. But it's really not necessary because the wrong sides of the two faces, uh, the two parts of the bunny ear face each other and you're never going to see them. So as long as everything in the back is neat and it's not pulling too tightly, Completely not a big deal. I may as well finish this row, right? And I'm keeping, you'll notice, I'm keeping all my floats on the wrong side of the work. The yarn is only floating up when it's away from, well, it's not away from me. Sometimes it's towards me, it depends on which side I'm working on. My point, which I lost, is that uh, the floats are always going to be on the wrong side of the work. I'm not bringing yarn to the front of the work and floating because that would not be tidy. So here's the end of row three. For row four, we're going to do what we did before, which is two single crochets in the first and the last, but I have to pay attention to the color work now. So here's two, one, two, and then the next one's my third. So now I'm gonna change colors over here because I only want, no matter what row I'm doing or how many stitches are in it, I only want my first three and my last three single crochets to be white. 
So the technical shaping is happening in the white yarn, but I have to pay attention to the color work to uh, keep things keep things neat and tidy. Now it's all written out for you in the pattern on the blog. There's one and then two, three in the white. So that was my first increase row, that was row four. So you're going to go ahead, but you see how my pink is spread out a little bit? I had three down here, now I have five. So you're going to keep going and following along with the written pattern instructions, which are on the blog. And you're going to make sure that your first three and your last three are in white and your middle ones are in pink, however that works out. Uh, but again, if you need it written out for you specifically, it's written out for you in the blog post. So I'm going to come back uh, at row 12. There's just one little thing I want to point out to you at row 12. Just a brief look at row 12 uh, would be helpful if I did the chain one in turn to talk about the color work. That single crochet together, uh, two together counts as one stitch. So to maintain my white, that's going to be one stitch, two stitch, three stitch, and then I'm going to bring up my pink color. And so when I'm going to the other direction, and it says keep stitching until you have two stitches remaining and do that single crochet together, two together, I'm going to keep going till I have four stitches remaining, one, two, three, four, because I have to change color. So I'm going to change back to my white, I'm going to single crochet one, two, and then my single crochet two together. That maintains my three white stitches on either side. So again, I'm going to keep going and uh, working on this, and then I'll be right back to show you crocheting them together. All right, here are my two pieces. I went and wove my ends in. I didn't do such a hot job, but nobody cares <laughs> because once again, they're on the inside. All the ends and the floats and whatnot are between these two layers where no one will ever see them. So I'm going to go ahead and put a slip knot on my hook and I'm going to single crochet the two pieces together. I'm not going to bother with the bottom because I'm going to sew that onto the headband, but I'm going to line these guys up. I did approximately one stitch per row, but again, count with your heart. <laughs> it's more of an art than a science. If you feel like your seam is pulling out and getting uh, too stretched out, then you should do fewer stitches. And if you feel like it's too tight and uh, drawing in and bending, then you probably have too few. I also wanted to say uh, I'm not real worried about these ears flopping because I have night tight stitching and a dense stitch pattern. But if you were, this is the point where I would do something about it. When I'm crocheting my two sides together, you can crochet either over white millinery wire um, or if you're not a crazy multi-crafty person like me and you don't have 50 yards of white millimeter, uh, white uh, millinery wire kicking around, a white pipe cleaner would also be something that you could probably get uh, inexpensively and crochet over if you want to wire your ears. I honestly did not feel the need. The last thing I want to talk about is when you get up to this tippy point. I put uh, three single crochets in the point again, so it doesn't fold over. So that was one, two, three. Just to take me around the point and keep it pointy, I'm going to go ahead and single crochet down the other side. All right, here is my second ear. I have woven in all the ends, just sort of in a loosey-goosey manner. Remember earlier when I told you to leave a long tail for sewing in? Here it is and I have just threaded that onto a tapestry needle. 
So to make the ears, again, to keep them standing straight, you want some bulk at the bottom. So you find sort of the center point and then fold each side in. So they meet in the center. Gives you sort of a, an iris or a lily shape. It's going to keep that ear standing straight. So I'm going to put a couple tack stitches in here to hold that the way I want it. Now, at this point, if you want to hot glue onto the headband, you can do that. Except I don't like hot glue. I have hot glue stories that I can tell you, but I won't. <laughs> I don't like hot glue on, on fabric or fiber. That is my issue. It is not your issue. <laughs> so I am not going to put hot glue on my guys. So there it is. You see how it's just folded in a little bit. Now I'm going to get my headband. And I've already done that one, obviously, so I kind of want to make it mirror. So I'm going to just, boy, this is hard to do on camera. <laughs> All right, trust me that I'm just kind of going through some stitches on the headband and then the bottom of the ears. Dig some stitches in the headband, bottom of the ears. I'm going to do that all the way across and weave that in. And then I'll show it to you all finished. And here she is, all finished up. Um, Again, think about the wires if you're concerned. The other thing you could do if you did the wires is you could sort of fold one down and have one up if that's what you wanted to do. But as you can see, even playing with it, that fabric's pretty stiff and it's not really going anywhere. The other thing you could consider, and I'm thinking about it, but I wanted to get this video up before it didn't have, an, you guys didn't have enough time to get these done for Easter. Um, you could do some flowers in here, some little roses, uh, and uh, if I was to do that, I think in that case, I would use the hot glue and that would also help keep those ears in place. So thank you so much for joining me here on Hooked for Life with Mary Beth Temple. I appreciate your time, I always do. Please like the video, leave me a comment, tell me what else you wanna see, engage, and uh, subscribe if you haven't to the channel. I'll see you again here real soon, bye-bye.